All right. This is Craig Lane with Health Alchemy YouTube channel and generally good business practices. Doing a fall cleanse with a group about 10 tonight, community dinner. What's the date? October 16th, 2020. And um, so the theme tonight is we're in this contracted season. So every year for about 15, 20 years, I've made it a point to write and try to explain and learn and embody how the order of the universe unfolds through what I just will say, this is our earth suit. So there'll be that. And so there's some seasonal aspects and then how the seasons, the foods, the supplements we take, the drugs we take affect our consciousness. Um, and there's really simple ways to study this stuff. And I was fortunate enough to have been immersed in it for over 20, 25 years and then through my business and practice. So tonight that's what we'll be sharing. And um, one of my guests, Jay and Drew, have to leave in 20 minutes. So we're going to try and cram a lot of this in. <laughs> dork. We can edit it out if you want later. Um, so let's start with, um, there's a whiteboard behind me here. And I may or may not point it over here every now and then. But for now, um, let's just point it over there in general. There. So the audience can share in some of this. You know, for now, and I can focus on you guys and not that uh, thing blasting in my face. So this time of year, if you look at the sort of the cycle of the year over here um, on this other whiteboard, you'll see that the day is like this, the moon cycle is like this, the year is like this. There's sort of a solar system year or solar system you know circles the center of the galaxy and our ancestors tended to study this a lot more and um, one of my teachers different teachers had different names for i call it natural law and so we're in the contracted time of year and as one of my teachers says when you resist what is you suffer so get over it the summer's over it's getting colder the days are getting shorter and this is the season of letting go is how the chinese see it in their cycle and so if you look at the terms of the seed, see over here the vector is inward going energies. So if you're doing an engineering diagram, it'd be all these vectors, arrows pointing inward. That's the energy of what's going on right now. And so it made sense to me long ago, 25, 30 years ago, I started studying this way of living and operating with the natural laws is that, well, what can I do to help facilitate this so I'm in less pain and suffering and illness, right? Because ultimately what disease and illness is, if you break down the word disease, well, the word ease is in there. And ease is very easily tracked within our own being. And that was always of the most primary interest to me is what can I track with my own being? Because I wasn't taking anybody's word for anything at any time in my life. And I'm alive because of that. It's like if my gyroscope says no, I'm going no. And I don't care who it pisses off because that's my truth. And I'm never, ever going to betray that truth. And no one said anybody else. So if you learn how to live in accordance with this, then your own gyroscope gets validated by the external world instead of for a lot of us, we're constantly invalidated. We're gaslighted constantly by the dominant asleep force in the world. But it's always probably gonna be that way. Again, get over it. This world isn't meant to be, you know, what I would like to see, which is like, what I call myself, a utopian idealist. I have the highest of values because I always see the highest in everything. And so the world is a, so one part of me, the world is a pathetic, a pathetic underachievement. But then there are people around us, like in this room, where you know, we're sort of the overachievers by the very pathetically low standards we live in, especially in terms of consciousness. So if it's, if it's contracted energy this time of year, I always notice when I started tracking this 20 years ago, this time of year, I always get what I call a mucus release. And I can either align with that music mucus release and facilitate it because it's a change of my blood quality. When you own a car, you change the type of your blood, 10W30, 10W40, 20W50. The, the thickness of the oil changes according to temperature you're in. So your blood does the same thing, different viscosity for different seasons. And that's why you get sick. Sickness means you're out of alignment with the natural forces of the universe in your own body. Your own body is telling you that water
And the signs the body gives can be, can be read and studied, and you can learn what I call early warning signals. So, you know, what I'll call the Cob lab phenomena. All that is, is the Cob lab and the viral phenomena is sort of an end stage result of an extreme buildup of toxicity and dysfunction in the system. Viruses are in a way, they're sort of temporal parasites. There are all these theories about bugs in our body correlating to consciousness. And I believe there are forms of consciousness that are parasitic too. Um, David Icke would call, they call them the reptilians, you know. They, they feed on fear and, and there are beings that do. And I've witnessed it from my own, my own <laughs> sensory apparatus, but that's neither here nor there. So what, what, we're, what I'm trying to put forth here is that we can be responsible for our own quality of consciousness. And, and I, started, I started to realize this 25 or 30 years ago, but I was incredibly addicted to carbohydrates and treats and had a lot of trauma. And I'll say self-inflicted abuse because I chose who I hung out with and ended up the Santa Cruz surfing scene is not the godlike beings you think they are. It's a lot of dysfunction in the Santa Cruz surfing scene. Um, it's a lot of sexual dysfunction and drug dysfunction. And generally the lowest of life forms are drawn to surfing, in my opinion, because it's such a soulful act to elevate that troglodyte energy, I used to call it. These guys are troglodytes. Troglodytes. <laughs> I've gotten in fights with some of these guys. Believe me, you, you understand this. I, I lived out there, you know. So what we're trying to do is that's a lower form of consciousness. It's a lower valence. Um, one of Carl's doctors that him and I mutually adore um, out of Europe, um, not to remember his name right now, but it'll come up in a minute probably. They used to talk about the quality of the mucus in our gut determines the form of consciousness we have and how tethered our soul is to this realm. So in other words, our reincarnation cycle is determined by our desires, which are determined by our gut flora and the biofilm that lives in here. And um, that's like, this is the stuff that, that I've studied and I run across and I, I got to share this stuff because it's, it's incredibly compelling to realize that I could be responsible for my own, even my soul's reincarnation continue, being continued here. And I could be at more choice whether I want to come back. Um, so, but I started thinking about this stuff when I was five, six years old. Do you understand who's talking to you now? Like, I've pretty much been through it for 50 years. And when I started learning the framework of how to apply what I called, I had all these keys and I didn't know which door to which key went. And I started finding Chinese medicine and this shaman over here and this, uh, oh my God, near death experiences and hospice work over there and body work over here and herbal medicine and plant medicine. And then I started to see like the fantasy novels I read as a kid, that magic is real, but it's not really magic. It's natural law. It's just subtle. And with the Vedics, which later became the Ayurvedics and the yogi system, that's a, that's a form of what I call the subtle sciences. And you see, it's subtle. And so in today's world, we study the hard sciences and it's brutish, it's refined, but there's nothing subtle about it. And there's nothing regenerative about it either. It's like implosive technology, which is explosive technology. If you go back to implosive technologies, like you know, our ancestors might have potentially could have flown around with aircraft where they had their hands on crystals and they telepathically told the aircraft what to do. I believe that's what was going on. I believe it can and might st still have been going on behind our backs throughout our lifetime, but that's another conversation. So the practical part of this, because, uh, yeah, getting down to, got my own little internal clock as these guys are here. Uh, Love it. Thank you. <laughs> that's one thing. I had this dream four or five years ago. Here's a great digression. As I woke up in the dream, I sort of, flew into the scene where I was standing in front of about 500 people at this convention center in Marriott, like over in San Jose or Burlingame or something off the 101. Those big, you know, like Abraham Hicks ones, you know, and I'm, I'm up there on stage and suddenly it's like being thrown into a scene. You don't know what you're supposed to do. I'm standing there suddenly in front of 500 people going, you know, I was looking at me expectantly. It's a big health talk. And I'm like, and then this, so I, I do what I always do. I just go help. And then spirit rushes in from the switchboard behind me. <laughs> and then it's like, and so suddenly I'm dancing, I'm going, hey, health can be fun, folks. And he's going, yeah, health is fun. And that's what I start to call edutainment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's education combined with entertainment. You know, it's, I had those, we've all had those god awful teachers, you know, the monotone guy reading the notes in front of them for three hours. 
and I realized I could be sitting at home. These are the classes I would just barely show up for. I'd just read the notes and get a seat, you know, like, okay, there's no discussion here. Let's not spend effort here. Sociology 101 is not the class I thought it would be. So um, back to this. So with this condensing energy going on, the mucus release coming out, um, what I started to see was the number one food, here's the, the, probably the biggest takeaway of the night, the single most important food of this season and any season at all when there's mucus, mucus, just for effect, mucus is, so first of all, what is mucus? We, we gotta define something here. Okay, this is where audience participation. Uh, what is mucus? Well, the exudate. exudate, okay. And it, I can say what it does. That's though, correct. Because it's going to flush things out and reject certain things that shouldn't be there. Why is there mucus? Let's go to the next question. Okay, inflammation, one possibility. It's one of the pathways to your body expels things it doesn't need. So it's a drainage pathway. So it's a drainage pathway. Okay. Inflammation, drainage pathway. Detoxifying. Okay. An immune product, an immune system product. Like pus. Yeah. Sure. Like, sure. What kinds of pus down there? Nobody knows about. What kinds of pus down here? You won't even know about how much pus they got down here. Yeah. No idea. That's when you start getting it flushed out. And I, I mean, I've had literally every shape, size, color, and zebra stripe and polka dot come out of me. I'm not joking. I've had poops where I'm like, oh my God, I'm glad that's out of me. Space egg aliens and little octopuses and black tar and you know, just, no, I, I didn't get to become who I am until I went through that, through thousands of enemas and clays and psylliums and every, I've tried over 500 herbs for God's sakes. I mean, my teacher was like, you're gonna try these 300 herbs or you're not graduating. And it's like, uh, you know. Because I was always diarrhea guy as a young man, so it's like half the herbs I took would be like on the toilet for the next 10 hours, you know, every hour. Talk about a flush out, but that's another, but that's part of the season, see? Contracting energy means if we're metaphorically a sponge, then the energy's doing that, then our impurities are gonna be expelled. And that's what that mucus is sort of, see, I'm here to teach process. I don't give a crap about chemistry. To me, all chemistry is, or these labels, are snapshots of life processes at a moment in time. I'm not interested in the snapshots. I'm interested in the process. That's what I'm here to teach and help. We look for dysfunctional process first, and then we prove it by this. But we don't base our life process on that. We base that on this, which is what one Zen master said, this pound of big steak on the floor is unexcelled enlightenment. Boom! My teacher, I just trying to be like, what does he mean? The steak is the master? Unexcelled reality is a mistake? Like just reality is now and only now and can o the truth can only be found right here. And for emphasis, he slams with the sound, you know, like it's now. And uh, Aurita, not Aurora, Aurita, it's right now. And Jesus pointed at it and all the masters pointed at it. So every skill that I have seen come across in the subtle sciences is a way to slow down the mind for perception and awareness to break through so that we can get a taste of what the alchemists call the greater world. And this is viewed as the lesser world. In the Bible, it's the Father, the Holy Ghost, Spirit draws the, the bridge to the Son. Father, the Son, which is this, the Father is the greater reality, the greater world. This is, but there's no value judgment either. As soon as we get stuck into value judgment, that's ego right there. That's the judge. We're, in the, the class that I'm used, doing with these guys right now, that really anybody could take, if you think about it, because I'm not necessarily teaching nutrition yet, is, is the study of the, the edge between discernment and judgment. Discernment is clean. There is no emotionality to discernment. With white bricks, clean. It's just what is. Judgment would be, God, white bricks fucking trigger me. See the difference? You know, one's charged and the other's like, it's just seeing what is. And the Buddhists call that, right, equanimity. Equanimity is that peace, contentment, satisfaction, living within us at all times. I mean, let's lose track of it, but that's the point. We were supposed to forget. Remember and forget. That's our whole life. 
as a spirit, that's what I've been studying for 30 years. How do I stay asleep, awake more? Because falling asleep sucks. I'm dangerous when I'm asleep. Look how much chi I got. You don't want this flapping around the world, you know, asleep. My housemates see it every now and then. It's like, oh God. And that's why that window got broken over there. It's just trying to kill a fly on the window. They're not very smart, but. <clears throat> but that's, again, that's that edge of being triggered. And I want to stay awake. My intention is towards grace. And that's my root prayers. Help me stay awake. Because none of my tools are useful if I'm asleep at the wheel. Therefore, the root level player is, please keep me awake. Because if I'm asleep, nothing's of use to anybody. Not anymore, at least. So when we eat foods that cause irritation, because I'm five minutes away from exit here. When we eat foods that cause irritation, well, I just love poking fun. It's some part of me. Um, then mucus is generally alkaline exudate. If you pH'd it, you generally show up alkaline because there's acid being generated from what Jay said, um, irritation. Irritation and acid go together. Acid's generally irritating. That's why you don't want to eat too much of an acidic diet. But what we call the acidic diet is a little bit of a misnomer because actually the, the most alkaline forming foods are the most acidic going in, like the citrus fruits. A better alkalinity that's a little easier on the system because trying to burn away those acids and metabolize them is a very stressful act for a lot of body types, like the protein type or the allergic type or the COPD or asthmatic. I get, I get all these people off citrus, except for lemon and lime because the citrus um, causes this over alkalinity problem and then you get a sort of a, a spasticity when everything's get too alkaline in this body type. I'm one of them. I used to be a horrible hay fever guy. So um, a better alkaline vegetable is like um, radish greens are one of the most alkaline vegetables and hijiki and the seaweeds are very really alkaline. So, you know, when they say alkaline for me, there's a whole study of that. And is it too much of a digression? Probably not. In Ayurveda, they call it the Vipaka, V-I-P-A-K-U. AKA uh, the paka is the post digestive effect of a flavor or a food. So you have a digestive effect, like coffee has a certain effect on you while it's being metabolized. And then there's a post digestive effect, which is viewed as cold and dry in most traditions because coffee is a diuretic. This is basically, caffeine is a poison, it's an insecticide. Um, that's another long conversation. Um, so use your poisons carefully. Um, <laughs> poison path. Most vegetables are viewed by some physicians now, even studying nutrition, as they're all poisons in a way, but different vegetables and fruits are antidotes for the other vegetables and fruits, which are poisons. And seed coatings and bean coatings and nut coatings. And there's all these, I mean, you know, almonds basically a tree fruit in the center of a lot of tree fruits is high in cyanide, form of cyanic acid, B17 laetrile, you know. It's not, that's not really spoken of a lot. You know, that's why the people in control don't really want you to know about apricot kernels and shit like that. Laetrile. So in terms of process, then mucus is sort of a, Okay, there's even a sign before mucus of sort of a lack of ease in the system. And if you look at your tongue every day, you'll see your tongue will be more swollen. And generally, when you start to see where there's generally no coat, like the rug is the coat, they call it in Chinese, and then there's the root, which is the underneath the color. So when I'm looking at tongues, I'm looking at whether it's swollen or not, um, whether it, where it's swollen, where the rug is, um, where the discolorations are, and if there's valleys or if the rug is gone why because that means that the rug has gone here it's rug has gone down here and there's generally ulcerations down there it's all a mirror and it's sort of an MRI without having to use invasive equipment and that's that's what you know I won't go to the sadness part because that's what I used to do is like medicine is sad because they're taking all this explosive technology and you know they're, they're putting radiation in cancer patients oh we gotta do a CAT scan here on you it doesn't matter that you radiation causes cancer while well, we're looking for your cancer now while well, you can use tools like the eyes and the tongue and with the right equipment, you can really zero in on the iris and you can get into like the blood supply of the kidney down to the nephron if you really have good enough cameras and lighting. Um, the stuff I have, I just, I get general patterns because it's a lot of time to do this sort of stuff. You know? Down to like that. But if you have people in hospitals investing their time and energy into this, this could replace the technology we have without all the invasive crap, this Tesla technology and whatnot. So mucus is generally a warning sign that something's going on, there's something irritating. And so the single most important vegetable for this is radish. I cannot emphasize this enough. You don't dick around and avoid radishes. I do, and generally the congestion builds up and then I have a season of radishes. So what am I doing? I'm using a standard process. 
Spanish black radish pills because they grow it on their farm and um, they dehydrate it raw and they concentrate it down. And it's just easier than grading it up. And, you know, I'm, I've been doing this so long. Um, but that's how much I value radish. I don't, I don't like taking a lot of supplements, but generally it's, it does make things a little easier. So if you're congested, mucus is like the roto rooter, the draino, yeah. the drain declogger. You know, when you're clogged up, think radishes. And you can even apply it topically to lymph glands and then grate the radishes and put it right on top of the lymph gland with a little wrap or something over it. And um, great way to, like I have pretty swollen lymph glands, but these are, this is the dam for the head, all the lymph drains right in here. So when these are swollen, it means the, the dam is backing up and you get ear compression and headaches. And a lot of that's because the dam isn't working. There's a, there's a method to drain this lymph pretty easily, actually. So when you get mucus, then your consciousness gets obscured. And just ponder that for a second. So that when the mucus appears here, it's in here too. Generally manifest as a sense of heaviness, confusion. In the Chinese extreme, they call it when mucus is obstructing the heart channel, they get what's called internal wind. And you can all feel that metaphor, you know, things are normally like nice and calm in here, but you, get, you know, like, Internal wind, you know, generally doesn't feel very good, and that's insanity. It's delusion, insanity, psychosis. Um, you know, so so the root of it is, what were the choices that led to that, right? You don't play the victim in my world, and that's why, as I said, that's why clients drop out. You know, we really weed out the victims. This, you know, they don't last very long. <laughs> I, I'm just. There's a certain person, you know, that fits with each practitioner, you know, that's why we have a team generally, and so I'm putting a team around me, so, you know, people don't get the, the hammer too early, you know, they need a little buttering up first. <laughs> <laughs> so, when the consciousness gets obscured, generally, what's the word that we say this? Brain fog, right? I got brain fog. Well, guess what? You got gut fog too. Almost guaranteed. It's like there's, there's your gut brain, your enteric brain, there's this brain. And there's only one bridge that bridges them, and that's the vagal nerve. There's 12 cranial nerves that come out of the brain, but they generally go into the head only. And this one goes out, attaches to the gut. So there's a, a sort of a superhighway of information going back and forth. And it's my belief that there's a, there's a lot of study in the standard process line of supplements, this little product line that goes back to 1930, believe it or not. Um, which a genius is associated with them. They've been studying the endocannabinoid system and how if you look at what's more immediate, like my spiritual teacher says, the peace you're seeking is always and already present. The, the peace you're seeking, the satisfaction you're seeking, is always and already present. So if it's always and already present, then how do I unenlighten myself away from that? It's already there. Life is a self healing mechanism. So if that's true, then there must be a way to get back, right? Because if I got a bunch of internal wind, how do I calm stuff down? And generally, when there's food stagnation, generally when you know, you're normally eating three meals a day and suddenly you only want one, that's probably because of food stagnation. And you know, I, I overeat too. I spent professional overeater, let's see, I got out of the home about 20. Well, that first year of college in the dorm was like everything was all paid for, I had all scholarships. So it was like a star student. And so I was like living on Doritos and ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, and, oh, man, it was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I was destroying myself. Yeah, uh, I was surfing, you know. So I'm sorry you guys have to go, but um, there is a recording, so. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about tomorrow morning with the um, contract. We just need to send the YouTube link out to the Freedom Telegram thread you know, every once in a while. That'd be um, a good thing. Um, so we're back to, yeah, they, they bring a lot of energy. Um, they're big energy people. It's like, I can feel that the balloon was this big and now it's about, you know, it's about that big. Um, all these years, it's just, it's just like second nature now. Oh yeah, the container got a little smaller. Um, so, Consciousness is sort of, it's, it's prior to everything. I mean, it, you don't have to effort to be aware, do you? Like, one of my teachers says, try to not be aware. 
That's an interesting exercise. You know, what do we call that in today's world? Getting drunk, <laughs> right? Um, a lot of us have so much trauma and abuse and gaslighting in our lives of things that we feel are true. Like, it's kind of like, you know, somebody's cheating on you and you just know it and they keep telling you they're not. It just chews you on the inside out. Like, oh, I know you're doing it. Can't prove it. And that's the way, that's how you drive someone insane. And that's what, that's what the people in control or have knowingly, I think, on some level, been doing to all of us. If 150 years ago, in, in Eisenstein's book, The Invisible Rainbow, I say that yeah. right? Furstenberg? Furstenberg. Thank you, Furstenberg. Well, I just, I'm reading that, and I'm in about the seventh or eighth chapter, and I just can't believe what I read. About 150 years ago, it was generally viewed as acceptable via a study that 30% of the population was electrically sensitive and sensitive to the weather, and, and generally empathic. It was just accepted. So these are people that I call the indigos, right? So what's happened to these 30% in the last 150 years? Medicated, institutionalized, gaslighted, bullied, right? Generally, that's what's happened to the natives across the globe. Gaslighted, bullied, treaties broken, right? But, you know, the Bible calls up the Satan, you know, the force of Satan. It's just a force. It's a force of ignorance and unconsciousness is really in the end, you know. We generally don't do bad things when we're awake, and that's my point about I, when you're aware of it, then life becomes so much more fun. Like, anybody that knows me, I'm constantly outing myself. Because then, I, I sit alone and laugh at myself, literally. People would think I'm insane sometimes. I'll, a random thought will come up and I'll just laugh. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe it just occurred to me, you know? So random. So when we eat foods that, there are charts that foods that are generally mucus causing and there are generally charts of foods that are mucus um, you know, releasing or dissolving. And flavor wise, generally the sour and the pungence kind of helps dissolve the mucus. And radish has both of those, if you add lemon juice to the radish, for example. So if you know, do one of those keep it simple kind of classes, then if contractive energy is this, then radish energy is that. That's what pungent is, remember we were talking about. So pungent, the vector of pungency, oops, caught myself there. The vector of pungency then, see is that, it's like spring energy, it's going straight upward, all directions. What does the seed do? Roots grow down, top grows up. That's what the Chinese call wood element energy or plasma energy. The water element out of all traditions I've studied across the globe is the dream, it's the water element, the emotion, the imaginative part, the innocent child, a lot of metaphor for it, um, out of the east and the medicine wheel and a lot of traditions. So that's kind of what we're here to do is, this is what I've been teaching for 20, 25 years now, is just this, this medicine wheel of life that occurs seasonally, it occurs in our body daily, it occurs in a woman's menstrual cycle and the moon cycle, which, you know, if you, there's no coincidence, the moon's 28, and the woman's about 28, you know, ideally. And why do we have a Roman calendar that we're living under that takes us out of that 28 day month, 31 day month, 30 day month, named after Roman emperors? We don't give a crap about Julius and Augustus, really. I mean, have a, you know, a month named after someone honorable, for example. You know, it's, it's really weird to me. Jose Arguez made a big argument about this in the Mayan calendar stuff back in his day. But I don't get this to go on too much longer. Um, so back to the original chart, and again, follow. I have this here to remind everybody, these are some of the bridges to get your consciousness clear because the body and consciousness, this is viewed as the air element up here, and this is viewed as the earth element or the salt in alchemy. If you want to see it as a three, as life process as a three-tiered system, the thoughts is the least dense consciousness. And you can feel that if you, I've been body scanning the same seven energy centers for 25 years, literally, I end every yoga session, which is basically daily for 25 years. So it's kind of good at like, not very dense up here feeling, very dense down here, right? This is like rock, metal, mineral energy, and this is like air. And then to keep it simple, there's air, there's the blood, the water, so conscious, the bridge between consciousness is the heart, the blood, the respiration, and then this is the salt, you know, the solid, the non-solid, the solid, right? So these things that affect the blood, nutraceuticals, medications, herbs, foods, and um, they help consciousness interface into the earth suit more easily with ease. And I, I liked this one word. My friend loved this word. Um, he had a guru in India. And it was Santosha. 
And I asked him, well, what does that mean in English? And his best translation was peace, contentment, satisfaction. What my teacher Adyashanti would call joy without cause. There's just joy present without cause. Or even meaning sometimes. And that's that always and already thing coming through. So just to define nutraceuticals very quickly, on one extreme, we have foods and herbs, which generally can be taken daily safely without side effects. And there are medications. So that's level one, they say in, in one tradition. Level three is like where you're playing around with poisons. And that's what medications were originally viewed as. Level one, level two, level three medications were poison. You went to the apothecary to deal with poisons. And food was level one. And then level two are herbs and substances that have side effects. But and that's what the nutraceutical is. For example, the B vitamins, most people go to the, the retail places to get vitamins from, are refined coal mining waste, all packaged up, all pretty. I'm not joking. And so they're, they're chemical replacements or nutraceuticals for the true B vitamin, which in food is actually facilitating a vitamin process in our body. Vitamin A is a process in the body. Vitamin B is a process in the body. Vitamin C is the fresh food process, the sunlight vitamin. Vitamin D is also a fat-soluble sunlight vitamin. Vitamin E is your DNA repair and armor, DNA armoring vitamin, so to speak. And vitamin F is just vitamin E. And what's vitamin F? You know? And so we've been fed so many lies for so many generations. We don't even know this stuff. And I had to look back 100 years to find it. The best nutrition work was done in the tw tens and 20s and 30s and 40s. And it's all been a dead halt since. All this bullshit. Because we started believing in nutraceuticals more than we believe in the natural processes of life. Vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. It's a cholesterol in your skin. It turns into this pro-hormone called vitamin D. D3 is one form of 27 isomers the forms of vitamin D from sunlight. You're selling yourself short. And you're cutting out your red blood cell supply. I'll go against vitamin D supplementation every day of the week. You get it from cod liver oil and sunlight. And dried fruits and vegetables. You take D3 only when necessary. And you treat it like it is. Partially drug-like. And I have scientific proof to prove my point based on the ferroxidase enzyme in the red blood cell. So we want to be careful with this, is my point, because it's level two and there are side effects. You take niacin too long, you'll have a hot liver. You take thiamine too long, B1, and you'll fry your nerves into oblivion. Those energy drinks that have 5,000 times the RDA of thiamine, B1, you're frying your nerves, folks. Frying your nerves. I see it in the sclera. In the brain zone, it's like a scram red, reddish blood pattern. Are you doing those energy drinks? How do you know? You know, a little scrambled brain pattern over here. It's hard to hide from someone like me, you know. <laughs> it's like I, I couldn't hide from my teachers. They're like, one guy had me pegged in five minutes. I was like, I felt like naked, you know, like, oh God, he knows my thoughts. <laughs> be pure, be pure, you know, like, please be pure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I had. I had some teachers, I, I couldn't believe how telepathic they were. It was like, oh my God, I'm not going to get away with anything here. Okay, uh, back to the congealed mucus conversation. All right. <laughs> so when there's mucus, you see the bridge between the body and consciousness is obscured because blood doesn't have really mucus in it. I mean, you, you can't have mucusy blood in a way. And the, and the live blood cell analysis people will tell you that. And they call it rouleau, where the red blood cells are kind of stuck together. That's clumpy blood, you know. Women see it in their, um, you know, in the female menses every month, the, the clot will come out. You know, the largest one I heard of was a tennis ball size one came out of one of my clients. A tennis ball size purple clot came out of her and she had been bleeding twice a month. And that was, I told her it was old tissue that had been hanging around your uterus. And, um, and, and a woman's uterus and trauma and psychic pain generally all go together too. I mean, you know what I mean? Um, Karina, for example, fibroid. I got a lot of fibroids in my life too. And generally the woman's got to deal with a psychic issue that's caused the fibroid in the first place where the fibroid can be cut out with surgery, but then the, the, the psychic fibroid's still there. And Karina's story is compelling, but I won't go into it now, but it is a story of too much mucus. All a fibroid is, is congealed waste. And there's some germinal cells in there too. I mean, you guys are eating, so I won't go into some of the things that may have autopsied fibroids and tumors, what's actually inside of them. I'm not gonna go into it now because these folks are eating, but it might make you vomit, so it's that bad. <laughs> I got a sensitive gut myself, and I don't wanna, like, 
introduce that thought form. So mucus, when it congeals, see down here there's beneficial mucus and catarrh, and the old nutritionists, like I said, 100 years ago, 89, they used to call this toxic biofilm, mucoid plaque is another way we call it now these days, um, was catarrh, was a precursor to that. Then it would congeal, and so think of it like this, the way, easy way to grasp this is, I was telling a client this today, her pulses were like slightly receded down this deep position here, and I go, you have a purple tongue slightly, which generally means blood stagnation in your case, but in your case, the blood stagnation is secondary to blood deficiency. So if the river is going along at a certain level, doesn't it make sense that there's a certain movement you know, of water? And if the blood is the same, and you see that in the tongue, it's a pink tongue. A perfect tongue is a pink tongue with a little bit of red in it. It's a perfect color for the root. And the redder it gets, the more heat there is internally. And so I'm looking at this, and I'm going, well, then the water recedes, and then what happens to water when it doesn't move? Does it start to stink a little bit? What happens to us when there's rot in our body? Stink. Poop gets smellier, urine gets smellier. And we don't, those are early warning signs again. Maybe I should do a cleanse, you know, I'm starting to stink. So yeah, so when the, when the, the blood gets more deficient, then you start seeing symptoms of blood deficiency And the Chinese, this is what I spent my lifetime studying. I'm actually due for a review some of the more subtle signs of because we're going to be teaching this to the class and that's that's what the teacher gets the benefit of like you, you learn what you teach that's what one of my teachers says so when i've been teaching the last 25 years like what do i want to learn more of i'll go back and teach these guys because i want to relearn this stuff again it's quite, it's quite fun that way so if you think pungent and sour is your two flavors to reduce mucus another way to reduce mucus is not to get it in the first place you know and so you watch your tongue Generally, the more swollen it is and more the thicker the coating gets, that means you're getting mucus because that's mucus literally on the tongue. Mm -hmm. And bad bugs feed in stagnation. Here's where the victim stuff gets thrown out the window. Yes, germs are bad, but germ theory was disproven when Pasteur died before he died. And so I wanted to see for myself for the last 25 years that it's all about the terrain. I read a book in the 90s about the HIV phenomenon, and these researchers had studied 10,000 HIV patients in New York City, and their conclusion after 10 years of study was that HIV was an internal mutation of the body's own processes. Their virome had mutated. Why is another conversation, you know? But there's that whole thing with Fauci and Gates, and there's some evidence that HIV is, there's, what, there's an HIV shock protein in the COVID-19 coronavirus as it's patented. Um, so generally that causes mucus, right? Viruses are irritating because they're getting into your cells and causing them to explode to make their own progeny. And you know, that's a horrible image, but so congealed mucus then attracts bad bugs. And then generally the first thing to come in is your virome changes. And why? Because certain insects and microbes are attracted to waste because in the natural law, that's what their job is. The janitors of the universe. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't put them down for doing their jobs, you know. They don't look nice, but, you know, we're doing a dirty job. We should get paid a little better. And give them a little credit. So one of my teachers says, uh, after Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who developed the GAP system, was asked this question about, um, it's uh, sort of unrelated, but she said, you know, when you, when you play the victim with, like, salmonella, she goes, don't blame the salmonella bugs for this doing their job. She goes, you probably made yourself susceptible to salmonella. And the food that you ate triggered the response. And so, and so that's, what I'm, that's why I'm here to teach empowerment. You know, you take empowerment and then you learn from your mistakes, which usually, um, stress is the number one thing we can monitor, you know, moment to moment. That's the most important one because when we're in an overwhelmed state, um, then we're just wasting energy. We're burning up our chi and the Taoists and the old, the old masters, you know, it's like we have a container of chi as a point of I'm not even talking about this, so you can build your container of chi and shut the shutters when you need to and open them when you need to more consciously because as empaths, generally I'm like this all the time and I got to learn this, you know, it's too porous, you know. I mean, I freak people out sometimes, right? Or really open up the gates like, oh my God, people have turned around, I'm walking behind them and they'll turn around and look at me like, what are you doing? Because I'm just beaming them, you know, they can feel it. That's just, that's a lot of build up of chi, you know, like, I tell you. So, we have a higher quality of consciousness because we're living in a higher valence because 
we're getting rid of these lower life forms, which again can tether this to the universe through our body. So a beneficial slime is necessary down there. And um, Donna Gates, who developed the body ecology diet years ago, she was an old mac ex macrobiotic like myself. She sort of rejected their dogma, their vegan dogma like I did. Um, because when you look at the old macrobiotic people, they were frail and thin and um, they were not athletes. And I, I grew up a surfer and a soccer player. And it's like, you know, if you're not walking your talk. It's like, step aside. These people weren't, and there were a lot of hypocrisy. And this bridge here, you have these interventions you can do. And how do you know if you have beneficial mucus and you come back to your tongue? And the, looking at the urine and looking at the bowels, generally helpful. I knew of a Tibetan teacher that he would taste people's urine. He would go in the bathroom for a while and come back out and be like, well, I based on life and our my analysis. And it's like, what'd you do? Oh, I tasted it and did this and this and the pH. And the client's like, what? But there, there is the five flavors and you're, you're trained in the subtlety of it enough. Like I can usually tell what five flavors smell a person has if I really zone in on it. There's a burnt smell, a putrid smell, a sweet smell, a salty smell. That's another one. I think it's a really bad one, but for, you know, I forget. And it represents one of the five flavors. But that's another long story. We're we'll digressing again. So mucus also goes from, there's cold mucus and hot mucus. The cold mucus is generally clear or white. They would say that's based in cold energy. And then when it turns yellow is the beginning of heat, and then green, brown. You know, it gets to brown, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. That's a lot of pus. It's a lot of heat. And generally then, you know, that's why echinacea is so great and then even more extreme golden seal. The golden seal is a level two herb. You don't want to mess around with it too long. It'll, it'll flush you out. Golden seal ideally used long term is just like a drop or two, drop to five drops. It has a tonifying effect at low dose. But echinacea you can use every day of your life, according to Kerry Bone, and I respect his work. Enough to say I would defer to him on that. I, I, I wouldn't consider it one of my top 10 herbs even because I think there are other herbs that are way more multitasker than that. And echinacea is not easy to grow. I was telling these guys, you know, my whole practice is based on what plants and foods and herbs are the easiest to grow and the most nutritious so I get the most bang for my buck and effort. That's how my health practice is based on. Less time, less money, less effort, maximum result. And it's like a business decision. You know, that's how I look at it. Even your digestion is a business decision. Your body puts energy into digestion to get energy back. If you're tired after you ate, that means you put too much energy in and you can get enough back. Bad return on investment. Dogma ends there. If you're a raw foodist and you're dragging your ass around, maybe you need to have some meat. If you're a meat eater and you're dragging your ass around, maybe you need to be a raw foodist. That's what I'm here to teach and that's why people drop out again. Because they're not willing to experience. They're willing to sit in the stands and spectate, but they're not willing to jump into the field. I'm here to teach the field. I'm not here to sit, spectate and take pills. And neither, neither is my team, you know? And neither is anyone that's studied with me the last 20 years. Because the, it's evident to each of us that, you know, in our heart. You know, that's, I want to live like that. You know, like living this way is what I spent my whole life shooting for. You know, so like every day to me is like, so when mucus comes again, it's like internal disease, lack of ease. Mucus is lack of ease here, then we have lack of ease in our consciousness. It's disharmony ultimately. And wind is easily measured because, you know, someone has wind, you see their, you see their eyes flickering, that's wind. Or little ticks people have. That's wind. And if you if you think about the process that they're in, they're literally like. One of my teachers says, you know, when you get the hot flash, he calls that a thyroid storm. Mm. Because they don't have enough iodine, which is a controlling element for heat in the body. Number one thing for hot flash is cooked seaweed, as thick as you can make it with kombu, and cutting down on hot spices and caffeine. And women are just it's way too hot, way too much, yin. you know, burning up, yin is the log and yang is the fire. And if you burn down your log, well, there's no more fire left, right? You gotta replenish the log somehow. Well, it ain't so easy in the body, you know? So, you know, I, so the, the hot flesh is a sign you're burning up your log too fast because you don't have enough control elements. Generally, that's iodine. That's why I have 25,000 bottles of Lugol's iodine in my office, you know? But you can't start with that directly. You gotta start with, Oh God, 500 micrograms, you know? We're here to get people up to 10 milligrams after 30 to 50 milligrams for two to three years. That's what it takes to flush the system out enough. We are so toxic. I've been through all this and I can't imagine 
going back to where I was. No way. Um, I just want to go with this. I, I talked about the, the insanity. So the quality of consciousness, um, I guess we can open it up a little bit now because I'm, I'm curious about any more signs. Oh, the, the color of the mucus then, um, the remedies then you have, warming remedies are generally the, the warming pungents like garlic, ginger, astragalus is a warming um, immune herb. So you use that when you see the clear and the white mucus. Radish would be more for the, the darker mucus, but it'll work either way because it's a food and it's full of water. But those really bitter, the bitter is more the cooling element. Your sour and your pungents are generally warming, right? Because we talked about this over the weekend. I mean, you guys weren't, a lot of you guys weren't there, but um, each of the flavors associated with two elements in Ayurveda. And I really find it's a good way to embody this stuff. So sour is water and earth and salt is fire and water. Excuse me, uh, salt is, yeah, fire and water, excuse me. And um, so the common element between fire between sour and um, pungent is fire. But bitter is, um, is air and earth, and, and so bitter is generally cold in the system. So then you have your orange yellow mucus, and then that's where you want your bitters. And um, echinacea is not necessarily an anti mucus herb, it's generally more specific for blood toxicity, blood heat. When you got those boils coming out of people, that's called blood heat. Um, I mean, guys that have pimples on their back, that's, that's all blood heat, and they should be like doing echinacea for a year, probably, <laughs> along with a severe liver cleanse. But it's another conversation. Um, a couple others. Uh, elderflower is, a, is an herb that has a bitter component, and it also has that diaphoresis thing I was talking about. So elderflower can be used, um, I tend to favor it more for clear to yellow mucus, but the deeper stages of yellow, yellow or green, or it's really bad, I generally want to throw in some echinacea. And, there are herbs I have in my office over here. There's all kinds of stuff, but if you keep it simple, like lemon balm is a good one, catnip gentle, and you get into um, herbs that are anti-mucus, like a greater selenine is sort of a, I mean, it's, it's the plant when you break the stem, it bleeds orange blood, for God's sakes. It's very pungent on the tongue. Oh, another one's uh, warming pungent mustard when the tongue is, you know, when the person, when the tongue is just completely clear and there's like water coming out the nose and that's generally like as cold as it gets. You give those people even, maybe even mustard, you know. There's even a mustard pack recipe in macrobiotics. You know, they put a mustard pack on someone's chest when they have what's called cold asthma, or it's aggravated by cold. What does beneficial mucus look like? Generally, it's clear or a little bit white on the tongue, surface of the tongue. So the tongue has no mucus and that person's dry, right? And when you give them a drink of water and check again, um, their tongue again. And it's one of the easiest markers to check the state of the internal affairs. I mean, really, besides the lower white of the eye is a really instantaneous one for me. So if you have white mucus, you can pretty much guess it's beneficial. Um, no white coating on the tongue. If you have any mucus at all, generally it's viewed as you, you've gone into stage one of symptoms. I have, I have this document we're going to be working with in... Um, I don't know if this introductory module, but one of the modules coming up in the 200 hour program is based in the stages of degeneration and how to determine where you're at. So generally when a symptom is, you know, infrequent, like on that bubble form that you bubble in in my practice, if it's a one, then it's once a month and it's viewed as stage one. You know, I got this tremor I get and it comes around once a month, you know, I'll be lying in bed and, and it just goes away. You might be able to ignore it once a month, right? But then it starts occurring weekly and then it's level two. And if it's daily, it's level three, and maybe I should look at it. Now it's kind of like when the, the, the clang in the car occasionally becomes, you know, more frequent. It's like, uh, I better look at that before the wheel falls off, you know, kind of thing. And that's how the body kind of works. And, and men are the worst with this, you know, absolute worst. They just let it go down to like, where they're barely walking, and they'll finally come in, their five toes falling off, and, you know, proudly just, yeah, I just did it. No kid, I lost them all. Um, that's the kind of guys I grew up with, um, really. So the, any other common ones coming? Oh, common foods. Generally, um, turnips are nice for mucus. And I have a document, um, you might remind me of Monica, about the anti-mucus food. Just, it's just a JPEG, but it could be easily take, given to someone for their trade hours, and they could type it up on Google Drive, make it prettier. I have a number of documents that are JPEG photographs of books that would be better just to have them you know, typed up nicely. 
that's one of them. Um, anti-mucus foods, and there's another one, uh, anti-toxic foods. These are out of Bernard Jensen's work. Um, and if you start doing enemas and you, and you really get into it, there's a stage of stuff that comes out and, and you get to what I call the squid leg stage, then that's generally the, I hate to say it, but in a lot of cases, it's the, the tentacles of the candida living in your body. They're like hyphae or octopus tentacles and the mother is somewhere tucked away. The, the mother came out of me and it was about a space egg about that big. It was the grossest thing I'd ever seen in my life and it was inside me. And literally my life force jumped a hundredfold after that. I mean, my, my nervous system was buzzing because I realized something had been parasitizing upon me that was no longer parasitizing upon me. It was, it was both gross and empowering at the same time. Like, I'm glad it's gone, but what an idiot I was for letting that thing hang out for, you know, 49 years, 45 years. And you're like, wow. And um, then Hilde Clark's work all made sense. And Hilde Clark wrote a book called The Cure for All Cancers and her claim was 90% of us have parasites. And I was like, denial, you know, for 25 years, I've seen that book, you know zappers and all kinds of quack equipment that really works in some cases um mm, where do you want to go pardon any thoughts on healthy parasites yeah good thanks um there's sort of a good and a bad to everything there is helminth therapy and generally people that are deficient in helminths because there's a certain natural ecology of them then um they tend to have more autoimmune disorders. And so they've given helminths people with asthma. These are NIH PubMed studies that uh, Michael McAvoy brought this up to me. We, we love bringing that shocking stuff out and they give people these helminths, whether they're temporary or permanent residents doesn't seem to matter, but these people get cured of their asthma. And I just call it target practice for the immune system. The immune system, it's like a cop force that doesn't have any fighting to do. They start drinking too much caffeine and start making up drama and turning on each other and turning on the population and because there's no hunt, you know, and so the immune system needs to hunt. And there's regulator T cells and there's all these, I mean, I have so much respect for the freaking immune system. It's, it's such a, it's all made in the bone marrow. And something decides whether it goes into a red blood cell stage or a white blood cell stage. Everything made in here is a stem cell. And then something decides whether it's a red or a white blood cell. It's very easy to see on very inexpensive lab work. It's like your white blood cell count's too high. It means you're eating really crappy, first of all. That was proven back in the 50s. The more refined food you eat, the higher is your white blood cell count after you eat. Digestive leukocytosis, they called it in Edward Howell's work. You know, it's astounding. So there are remedies for blood sort of mucus and blood toxicity, but if it's gotten into the blood, that's level three, like I was saying, in stages of degeneration. And generally, you can, you can affect the blood for the better in 30 days, is the good news. You can affect the gut for the better in three to five days, because the gut lining from here to here renews every three to five days. It's a lot of turnover. So if you're not getting that turnover via protein and vitamin C specifically, then you're screwed. And a lot of people don't realize that. And they eat all the carboholics they want, but then they, a carb, the excess carbs causes bugs to flourish in there called funguses that tear down matter and cause, guess what? Permeable gut. A lot of people's permeable gut is because of their own choices. Again, back to foundation one. You got to get your chooser in order. And that's why we spend so much time on this first introductory module, which will eventually play over and over again for people, you know, like if um, Greg Paul's doing it in his Law for Mankind um, thing that I'm in, he's got this whole telegram group just up in arms about, they're all awakening. Because he's tying together the laws common to I, his stuff's even deeper than common law. It's the laws common to I, the laws of the soul. He went even deeper than common law, this guy, and he's got these people waking up, which is the whole point of, like I was saying to Jay and Drew, is the point of what I'm doing as consciousness is to throw down the rope into the Brea tar pits of delusion and pull people up. I used to jump down with people. Oh, I'll play around down there and duality with you and the dense delusion sticky crap down here. What the fuck am I doing? Oh, that Bodhisattva shit. Fuck that. I'm going to start throwing the fishing line down and reel them up and shit. And that's what we're doing here. It's a lot more fun up here. Now, let me tell you, we all have suffered here in this room, I'm sure. You wouldn't be sitting here with me if you hadn't. You'd be out the door by now. You ran five minutes into my talk. <laughs> uh, I want to run to my own talk sometimes. <laughs> it's what's scary. Wait, what did I just say that? So when you cleanse, then what I was going to talk about is like radish consciousness. It's kind of popped in my muse last night. I was falling asleep and like, hey, talk about radish consciousness. 
don't even know what that is. So radishes are sort of like, like our pioneer plant, first of all, in the spring. Um, I used to live up in Davenport, um, <laughs> actually crossed on the restaurant in an RV a few years ago. Definitely a low point in my life, but it was a high point because of being up there. And in the spring when it rained, first thing to come up up there were the radish greens. It's like, wow, look at those free, very alkaline vegetables. And, you know, they don't taste well, so they're better off. I like to just puree them with water and let them sit in the water or juice and let them sort of gas off and then squeeze them out. I mean, Gene knows. Right? We have our own omega juicer. It's our hands. Remember when you're squeezing it through the strainer? It's like, you don't need a thousand dollar omega. You, you puree the greens in with some water or juice, let it sit for five or 10 minutes in the juicer, put it over the strainer, squeeze it out. I call it a blended juice. Then if you want the fiber, then you can put some of the fiber back in, but it's your choice, you know? Um, which is another important element of carrying mucus out of the body is if you look at the earth, the earth, if you go out into a natural, let's see, we're mostly a natural group here. Um, there's a certain layer of mulch on the soil where the oak leaves fall and, you know, the, the vegetables rot and it's mulch, you know, and we have a mulch in here. That's what's our beneficial layer of mucus is. Donna Gates talked about it, you know, it's like this little biofilm and it's kind of slimy. You ever dealt with a kombucha mushroom? That's literally what's down there, a little layer just like that. And the whole thing's alive and the whole thing's a symbiote. So what's going on at the bottom, those guys at the top know what's going on at the bottom and the guys at the bottom is going on at the top. When I was at my worst candida phase, I would literally think and get that first treat towards my butt, my, in my mouth and something down here would go. And I'm like, oh God, is that that worm? You know, like, <laughs> it's so happy right now. <laughs> Because it knows what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh God, <laughs> am I feeding my own doom? You know, kind of thing. Because everything eats and everything shits. See? I don't want that thing shitting in my body. You know, I, I, I sort of might just sort of like freaking people out because that's really what's going on. We're mostly bugs. Get over it. You're the captain of the bug ship and they're shitting inside you. <laughs> so you better make better decisions so there's better bugs or those shit's good for you. You know, like, the healthy bacteria make immune factors and B vitamins, believe it or not, and proteins and immune globulins and the bad bugs. I mean, they're making stuff called putrescine. That's Bernard Jensen. He used to, he used to test all the chemicals and you know bowel poisons and people's shit. And that's how I knew what he was. And there was this one that um, it's actually in the maple. It's in it's in maple flavor, artificial maple flavor. It's called putrescine. Unbelievable. Yeah. I get it. Defecation. Huh. <laughs> they isolate it. Wow. No, I'm fucking with you. I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a reason they call those things gold. Candy gums are gold. <laughs> you get those urine factors out of them. It's so. It goes all the expensive cosmetic and urea from. Well, they call it Alantoin. Yeah, A L L A N T O I N. That's as the. Well, that's, but it also says urea, right? Oh, it will say urea on the packaging. Oh my god! Well, at least they're honest, you know. Yeah, oh, because they're like, like chemically one or two steps removed from each other. So you, mm -hmm. well, you could you kind of fudge it and say it's Alantoin. It's like Target versus Target, you know. Yeah. I shop at Target. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slap slap. Um, I think I'm going to end with. I love the questions; they're really helpful to kind of narrow it in a little bit. Um, any other foods? Let's see. Uh, seaweeds are very good for mucus too, and they're, they're, more, they're more building. So, when someone's in a cleanse with me, I can kind of tie it in with that. Is the first thing I'm looking at is I'm going to say, "Go lie down for five minutes and take your blood pressure and temperature." And then I'm going to compare that to your blood pressure when you stand up. It's a way to quantify your vitality very quickly with numbers. So this is Dr. Ragland, R-A-G-L-A-N-D. Dr. Ragland developed this test back in the 70s. And of course, you don't hear about it anymore because everyone's their cool technological computer crap, you know? But these barefoot doctor techniques are very valuable because they cost you zero dollars. And it's again what I'm here to teach, which is, I mean, it's, what we're doing here when I saw it 30 years ago, I was like, oh my God, this isn't anything new. I've just, my own particular package, there's lots of great stuff out there. Um, but what's unique that no one seemed to really take advantage of is the study of the hepatic portal veins, all the veins in the intestines of the liver, and the study of the lymphatic system. I don't know why practitioners don't study this stuff. This is core foundational stuff. 
your cells are literally shitting into the plasma slash lymph. And I don't know why people don't study it because the more shit there is in the fluid stream, the more congested it is. And it becomes that congealed mucus, congealed waste. That's what the fibroid in the tumor is again. That's level three, right? And you got a grapefruit sized ball of congealed waste inside your uterus. You got a hell of a lot of stuff to deal with. I was, I had a, a client like that and I called her little baby fibroid because there's so much unresolved. She was a Mormon. She had this terrible Mormon upbringing, you know, you can imagine. Oh my God. So the fibroid was the manifestation in her case of, um, she wanted to have kids and a family, but it never really manifested for her. So that was sort of her secret desire that manifested it sort of the wrong way. Um, I tried to help her get it out without surgery, but in the end, um, she, and then in the end, she had the surgery, and she had acupuncture to help her through it. I set her up with this old master, uh, Michael Burton. And it's a good case, though, where it didn't really deal with the root cause. So at some point, she'll be asked by her higher powers to deal with why that fibroid was there. And, and it'll come in another form. Um, I guess it's worth it. It's coming up. It's a kind of a, I don't know where this thread's going to go, but I know it's important to bring it in. And that's, if we ignore the signs, when someone me comes along, I'm able to see things that people usually can't see, especially in themselves, and they usually end up in my practice because they sense that something's amiss and they need to know what it is so they can make a course correction because their trajectory is going into the librea targets. And they see, and generally people that have known, I have clients that I don't hear from for five, 10 years, and suddenly Craig pops up. And then they realize, well, why does Craig pop up? And the next day they, they realize why. And in this case, um, my, my mother was the youngest of three girls. And so her oldest sister's husband had, um, he was in the Navy and I mean, he was an Air Force pilot, experimental aircraft. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of radio frequency emissions and electromagnetic stuff. And he was in a disharmonious field, I'm sure a lot in his body, all that electric equipment around him. So he had prostate cancer. And they wanted my opinion. And I said, well, you're either going to deal with the root cause or you're going to get the radioactive uranium, whatever Rod's putting in his prostate, which isn't going to deal with the root cause of why you got the cancer in the first place. She goes, oh, you're a quack. My doctor said that you would just say something like that. And I go, I go, well, before you hang up, I'm going to tell you this. I go, in four to five years, if you don't deal with the root cause, it will have metastasized to his liver or his brain or his bone marrow, and he will die within three months of that diagnosis. That's precisely what happened. And I never say I told you some cases like that. Never. You know, she doesn't need to hear that. But I wanted to say it because it's like, you could have saved his damn life. But that's their dharma, right? It's not for me to interfere there. And that's one of the things we're working as practitioners because that's mucus. It's just waste. You don't need it. Um, so I think the tongue is an easy thing to look at. Your urine will generally be cloudier when you have mucus. So mucus in the urine generally looks like cloudy urine. Um, stool, if you have mucus on your stool or around your stool, you, you got to look at the why. And blood on the stool is not good either. Um, but your tongue will always tell you your condition of heat, you know, white or clear coat, you're neutral or cool. And if it starts getting into yellow, then you need to look into it. And you need to eat more raw vegetables for sure, certainly raw greens. Or if you can't tolerate raw greens, then you do green juices, get it in juice wise. And I'm not talking about powders. Nothing's as good as the fresh juice. 80 to 90% of the vitamin C in your fruits and vegetables after they're picked is gone after 24 hours. I can't emphasize the importance that you get your foods fresh. It actually should be in like the first page one, you know, 29 point font and bold blue letters, you know, fresh, organic, local. That was Shea Panine, Alice Waters back in the day. Oh, she's not a pedophile. <laughs> she's like, Jesus, who was clean, you know? Um, mucus, these people are, they have mucus of their spirit. Yeah. Again, so the remedy, um, the other remedy for mucus is, you, you know, activity and more fluid is another obvious one. And you would think that fat would be contraindicated for mucus, but in some cases, um, mucus is there because they're not getting enough fat. If you're a protein type, if you're a person, you could tell anybody that if you have a chronically high appetite and nothing satisfies you, the first question to ask that person is, when was the last time you had a lot of meat and butter? And if they say no, you say, you go have yourself a big fucking sausage cooked in butter. 
with a salad and you're going to feel a lot better. I don't know how many, but this is a specific type of metabolism. It's mine. It's about 10 to 25% of the population. Um, the more dominant is the mixed people and they're the ones I envy because they get to have a little bit of everything. I count the gene over there. Damn it. Um, a little, you're a little closer to swing and then um, Monica's a little more even further. You are, you're a protein type. That's right. You have the C answers and I have Diana take the test, I think. I don't remember what hers was. She ever took it. But the low uptight people are the are the ones that need the carbs and the low fat. Because they're they're literally in their gyroscope, their nervous system is being run through the sympathetic branch versus the parasympathetic branch. That's something that I'll be teaching very soon. Very small segment of the introductory is these dualities to look at in a person and differential diagnosis. So that's why in the mucus we're talking about, that's differential diagnosis. Right? Differential assessment. I guess if I say diagnosis, sorry, FDA, not, you know, oh, I said diagnosis. It's a tree diagnosis. Yeah. Do you have that metabolic test on the It's in the patient portal in the AccuSimple system, but it would be a good resource for somebody to have. I think that, um, I think. I have a little, one of the desires on my to-do list was an IT person. That could be a real simple task to just go into the Google Drive and have a little click here button, you know, on the website. And a whole assessment forms page, because I, that's the next thing to bring about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to button up this thing and then we'll go into private. So folks, we had a lovely little talk here, but the main takeaway is, if you view the head as sort of the air pole, the heart, and the circulatory system is the water and the, um, the fire pole, you know, with blood being red, like fire. And then your physical body being like the salt, the earth and the water, like, you know, earth and water together are mud. And that's generally kind of how we're made. We're minerals, earth, mud, proteins. And that, you know, we're made of these elements. There are five, actually, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen, the chosen ones, as um, one teacher puts it. And so in and of themselves, all these elements, though, are mucus forming and acid forming. So when you eat them in excess, you need these other foods, which are all the other flavors. Too much of the sweet and the full sweet makes you have excess buildup and congestion. You need the other flavors. Generally, it's pungent and bitter and sour are generally the reducing flavors. You could build a body with sour because there's earth in there, but generally you build a body with salt and earth I and mean, salt and sweet. Um, and when I say full sweet, those are the there's empty sweet is something that tastes sweet. And full sweet is like your your steaks and your cheeses and your rices and your beans and they don't taste sweet but they're of earth and water more on the earth side than your empty sweets like sugar and more on the watery side yeah, it's sweet as earth and water so the way to the fastest way to do that the biggest takeaway is radish and um when we lead a cleanse there's one product that you know i've been doing cleansing for 15 20 years now and standard process makes this product called sp cleanse like standard process cleanse it's vegan and it's $25 for 150 capsules. And I take it probably six, seven times a year, just in between cleanses even, because I generally, I feel lighter. My bowels work better. Um, I'm not as angry because liver is an anger organ and I'm a livery person, they say, Chinese say. You know how a person means livery? Their pulses are like guitar strings. Twang, 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 twang. You can twang my pulses like twang, twang, twang. Everybody else's pulses are like, you know, the, the strings been... <laughs> Any tension in there at all? <laughs> With me, you go like, hey, chill, calm down. Um, and so there's ways to learn this stuff. And that's what, you know, I, I'm not a self-promoter, but I hear Monica thinking over there. So we are doing a couple of things really good. One of them is uh, nutrition school, inter interpersonal alchemy. You can go to my website, healthalchemy.com, H-E-A-L-T-H-A-L-K is in kitten, E-M-Y.com. They mentor's portal there for the other websites. Um, I need to promote the men's group. I've got a men's group going by popular demand starting next month. It's going to be on the first Saturday of each month and the third Thursday from 6.30 to 9. That's also um, on a website called genderalchemy.com, G-E-N-D-E-R-A-L-K-E-M-Y dot weebly, W-E-B-L-E-Y dot com. We've got to fix that pretty soon and get the weebly thing pay the money for it but for now it's a free website and finally there's lots of tutoring starting up here and we have community dinner here every friday night free potluck seven to nine and usually a free talk last week we were up at heartland um and wow i mean 
I feel like I want to do a little five minute video of all the photos and montages and slideshows and just really, um, I think that that's um, worth, there's a prototype eco resort thing and that's what the house I have here, if you look behind me, these, these are literally um, Adobe brick and there's little mini crystals in there. So this is a form of organite that's sort of reflecting EMFs away from the house. And, you know, ironically though, we have, you know, we have a Wi-Fi equipment in here. So <laughs> yeah, I love the hypocrisy here, you know. And, um, and that does cause mucus too, there's sort of a mucus in the nervous system and you can see that in the inner part of the eye, in the white of the eye. Yeah, I, I, I have little guides that are, I have data, Dave, Davey, Davas that help me through this. That's why I don't worry about it as much because, you know, yeah, I might die a little sooner and probably lost more hair than because of all this too. Like, um, but so be it, you know. I'm getting ready to shave it all off and be Kojak pretty soon anyway, so. <laughs> you, my friends, agree. We aren't going to walk around this stuff curved pulled forward or anything. So, uh, oh my God, I've digressed way too far at the ending here. <laughs> oh, sorry, folks. Uh, Craig Lane, YouTube channel, Health Alchemy, uh, wonderful people, Jean, and Monica, and Diana's, and <laughs> I just can't even talk about everybody here. Have a great night, folks, and um, this will probably be edited out anyways. Goodbye. <laughs>